Am I the a-hole stories? Would I be the a-hole if I go to my younger daughter's wedding? My younger daughter, Haley, 28 female, is marrying my older daughters, Jennifer, 30 female, ex-fiancé, Sam. Jennifer is mad at me because I'm going to Haley's wedding. She says that, I'm condoning her bad sister's behavior as always, but that's simply not true. When the wedding was called off, and we found that it was because Sam and Haley were dating, I called Haley immediately and I asked her to rethink the relationship. Not only for her sister's sake, but also because, if he could do it once, he could do it twice, and I didn't want her to get hurt. She reassured me that, that wasn't the case, that they were meant for each other, and had known this for a long time, so I left it at that. I spoke to Sam, too. He apologized for any hurt he may caused, but said that it wouldn't be fair to marry Jennifer, when deep in his heart he knew that he was in love with Haley. They've officially been together for a little over a year now, and they truly seem happy and in love. My husband is supporting Jennifer. He's disgusted with the whole situation, and doesn't want anything to do with it. At one point he announced that he wouldn't be giving Sam his blessing, or walking Haley down the aisle. I don't like what this household has become. This is the first Christmas we haven't spent together as a whole family. I don't like the situation any more than my husband or Jennifer do, but they don't understand that ignoring the reality of it, doesn't make it go away. When he had said that he wasn't walking Haley down the aisle, she was devastated. I asked my husband if he was willing to risk his relationship with Haley by not walking her down the aisle. Jennifer accused me of trying to twist him to my side. I told Jennifer that it's not about sides, it's about learning how to forgive. I've told her that it's been over a year now since her and Sam broke up, and she's been bitterly jumping from relationship to relationship because she's so focused on Haley and Sam, and that if she never learned to forgive them, she'll never be at peace. She says that I don't understand that Haley purposely stole Sam from her, and that she's been doing this since they were kids and I never noticed. I told her that she should have told me then. She said that I should have been paying closer attention and noticed it. I told her that she had to learn to let go of certain things in the past in order to move forward, and that if Haley did steal Sam as she claimed, then Haley did her a favor. She didn't want to hear that, but it needed to be said. I also offered to put her on a three-way call with Haley, but she declined. Then she gave me an ultimatum. She said if I go to the wedding, it means Haley was my favorite child all along, and that she'll never speak to me again. I told her that I'm going to the wedding, just as I would have gone to hers if she was in that situation. She said okay and hung up. Later, my husband calls me from work telling me she called him crying. Edit. I wanted to answer some questions here. Question, were Sam and Haley having an affair, or did they start to date after the wedding was called off? I'm not really sure. I never asked for details, and I'm not sure I really want to know either. From what I've been told, Sam came to Jennifer and told her that he couldn't marry her because he was in love with Haley. Question, when I spoke to Haley, why didn't I tell her she was wrong? Because if she doesn't feel like she's wrong at the age of 28, then nothing I say will convince her otherwise. We've all known what's it like to be in love with someone, that people we care about don't like. And how did that turn out? Despite warnings, we had to see it through to the end and suffer the consequences. Because I loved her, I still warned her, but it's up to her to make the decision for herself now. Question, why am I supporting Sam and Haley's relationship despite the hurt it causes Jennifer? I'm not supporting the relationship, I'm supporting Haley. Not because of what she did, but because of who she is. That's my daughter, and no matter how much I disagree with her or Jennifer's actions, I carry them both of them inside me and my love for both of them is unconditional. I've supported and comforted Jennifer to the best of my ability, and I will be here to do so until the day I die, but that goes for Haley, as well. Now for the top judgment. You're the a-hole. Your daughter breaks up your older daughter's relationship by cheating, and you support her over your betrayed daughter? She is the victim here and you're telling her they did her a favor, and get over it and be nice? How did you ever even become a mom? Sounds like her accusations absolutely have merit, and you likely do favor your youngest. Don't be surprised if you lose her relationship for good. Sounds like you've already lost her respect and love. So glad at least her father is there for her. She became a mom the same way her Haley betrayed her sister, by having intercourse pretty simple. She then consistently chose to be a bad mom after having the act, the same way Haley is choosing to be a bad sister by having the ex. You're the a-hole, as are Haley and Sam, but that goes without saying. You are treating this as a relationship issue involving Sam, and it's not. 
It's about Jennifer being betrayed in the most personal way by her sister. As a mom, you can, and should, love and support Haley as your daughter, but that doesn't mean condoning a relationship. She needs to learn there are consequences to such incredibly cruel behavior, one of which should be she doesn't get her dream wedding with universal acceptance. You're the a-hole. Your youngest child stole your oldest child's fiancé, and a year later, is going to marry him. She knew she was going to break her sister's heart. I'm sorry, but no matter what I felt for someone, there is no way I would betray my sister. Not even a friend, never mind family. Your daughter, can be as upset as she wants about her dad not walking her down the aisle. To be honest, she needs to suck it up. Upset? Boohoo. It's of her own doing and a fraction of the hurt her sister is feeling. You are choosing your youngest by going to her wedding. Your eldest has done nothing wrong, except for be betrayed by two people who should have had her back. If a man ever did this to my daughter, I wouldn't be having much to do with him at all. Let alone supporting a marriage to my other daughter. I support both my daughters. Um, sadly this is one of those situations where you don't get to support both. You have to choose, and OP has very clearly chosen her favorite, the one who with this terrible man betrayed her sister and everyone seems to see it but her. How gross. OP, you're the a-hole. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for giving my nephew a 50k loan as a wedding gift? I'm 55 male, retired after getting really lucky with investments. I'm not rich, but me and my wife have more than enough to live comfortably for the rest of our lives. My nephew, 24 male, has been putting himself through an ordeal this year trying to hold on to his job while also proposing and planning a wedding to his lovely girlfriend, while also planning to buy a house. After doing the math on his purchase, due to HOA rules, he needed another 35k in cash to close the deal. As soon as I heard about this, I offered to lend him $50,000 interest free as a wedding gift. I told him he can pay it back whenever he can. I know Reddit has a thing about not lending to family, but he's a good kid and he's good for it. No question. My nephew, his soon-to-be wife, and my brother, have all called me to thank me for the gift. To be honest, I'm happy to help out the new couple, so it's not a big deal. My sister-in-law on the other hand, was not so sanguine. She called me this morning to tell me the couple has an online wedding registry, and I told her I already gave the couple my gift. She got very upset with me, and told me that a loan is not a gift since I'll eventually get all the money back. I told her that it is a gift because 1. The loan is interest-free, whereas with a bank, over 30 years they'd probably pay $25,000 in interest. 2. My nephew doesn't need to spend the money, the HOA just insists be have it in cash. Don't ask, he intends to invest it, and should be able to grow it in the coming years. Eventually he can return the principal and keep all the gains. 3. They couldn't buy the house without the money, so part of the gift is the ability to buy their dream house. 4. The couple is happy with their gift. Even still, my sister-in-law took the opportunity to call me miserly and cheap, and insisted I actually spend some money to buy the couple a gift. At first, I thought she was wrong, but then I thought maybe she has a point? In the sake of family peace, I purchased a few things off the registry but am I the a-hole for initially only giving the loan? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. I'd take an interest-free 50k loan, over a silverware set as a wedding gift in a heartbeat. Absolutely lol. If I was OP, I'd call nephew and tell him, okay, so as your mother requested you'll be getting a blender for your wedding and no more 50 k loan. And then sit back with popcorn. Edit, once the dust settles and she grovels suitably, go back to your original gift. Not the a-hole, the audacity to call you cheap after giving her son a 50 k loan to buy a new house. I thought this was going to be a post about them being annoyed you didn't consult them first but. She's just upset because she wants you to buy her kid a second gift? I'm not sure why you'd even think you're the a-hole here, but rest assured you're not. Yeah, I thought this was going to be a, you are making everyone look bad by spending too much, but. Miserly? WTF? Not the a-hole. I think you're being incredibly generous. You aren't giving them a physical gift, sure. But you're gifting them a head start on their future. As someone going through an extremely similar situation, juggling house hunting and wedding planning during a pandemic. I would be eternally grateful for the ability to breathe a little easier. Don't worry about you sister-in-law, you nephew and his family seem to understand how important this is. Don't sell yourself short. The next story is titled. 
Am I the a-hole for telling my brother not to contact me again until he gets his life together? Even though I, 27 female, am 10 years younger than him, 37 male, I have always been my brother's keeper. Ever since I was a kid, I noticed my brother was not like other people when it came to his alcohol intake. For years, I watched as my brother essentially ruined his life over his addiction, as I and the rest of our family begged and pleaded for him to help. We have offered every bit of help, which is just met with anger, refusal, and being told to mind our own business. From being arrested for public intoxication, being put on a ventilator because of alcohol poisoning, or erratic behavior, my brother has done it all because of his addiction. My brother stated if I really cared for him, I would just be there for him whenever he needed me. As we are close, I promised I would always be there, but he really did need help. Back in October, my brother was diagnosed with liver failure from years of hard drinking. Thinking this would finally be the push he needed to get help, my brother told me that he was never going to stop. That this was the way he wanted to live his life, and no one could tell him otherwise. He lived as a drunk and wanted to die as a drunk. I cried and told him that unless he got help, I would not be helping him out anymore. Being worried about him has taken an emotional toll over the years, and I couldn't do it anymore, and hung up. The day after Christmas, I got a call from the county jail where he was at. Apparently, something happened, that he wouldn't go into detail, but he was in jail and he needed me to come and help him out. He lives around the San Jose area, and I live around the Las Vegas area. I asked him what happened, and he refused to tell me. I asked him if it was regarding his addiction, and he refused to tell me again. I told him unless he told me what was going on, I would not be going out there to help him. I have a chronic lung condition and cannot travel due to everything going on. He told me that he needed me, but was adamant that this didn't change a thing. I told him I was sorry, but until he got his life together, I did not want him to contact me, and hung up. After thinking about it and talking to my husband, I blocked his number along with all his social media. My family really came for me for doing that stating I was a horrible person to do that to someone who is so in dire need of help, but I am fed up. I cannot help someone who doesn't want to help themselves, and after literal years, I am done. None of my other family members decided to step up and help him, but have always expected me to drop everything to help him since I am the closest one to him. So, am I the a-hole for not helping him out? Top Comments Not the a-hole. Your family is hypocritical. They're just as capable of helping out your brother as you are. They're just all comfortable with the scenario. Where you're always digging him out of his own manure. Sucks to be him to realize his hole's gotten so deep, the rope you offered him doesn't reach him anymore. And that's his own fault. Not helping someone who spits on your hand every time you offer it, isn't the wrong thing to do. It's the healthier option for you. Absolutely. OP's family wants her to keep herself perpetually lit on fire to keep her brother warm. Not the a-hole, join Alcoholic Anonymous. You can't make someone want sobriety. You also can't destroy yourself trying to get him sober. Only he can do that. Your family is wrong to blame you, he's the addict. You've reached your limit and you have to let him find his sobriety. Enabling him hasn't gotten him sober yet. Not the a-hole you are not obligated to enable your brother's addiction. Exactly. OP. Your brother has never dealt fully with the consequences of his addiction because you were always there to cushion his fall. This has enabled him to stay an addict. Now I'm not saying this is your fault, but you are a piece of the familial puzzle that's helping him to stay this way. It is way past time for him to find out what happens when he truly has to solve this problem himself, often that's the only motivator to change. Think about it, why would he change now? He knows that you'll always help him up when he falls. It sucks and it feels counterintuitive but it's the only way. I second, or 42nd, all the fellow Redditors that recommend Alcoholic Anonymous, they can help you see this cycle and break free of it, while feeling good about yourself and your decisions. My partner's brother is an addict too, and we have kind of a mantra about it now, nothing changes if nothing changes. Best of luck to you. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for not sharing money I have saved for my niece with my wife's nephews? Back in 2000, I had the fortune of winning a lottery. It wasn't millions or anything, but I paid off my college loans, bought a house, and was able to be comfortable even through the recession in 08. When my niece was born three years later, I immediately loved her like my own, and decided she would have the same head start I did. Now, my niece will be 18 next year, and I've saved enough for her college, and for her to outright buy a decent sized house whenever she's ready. My living expenses have only been a few thousand a year, 
and my job pays very well, so I've saved most of my pay for this. This will hopefully allow for her to pay it forward to the next generation and always be comfortable. The issue is my wife. We've been married 8 years, together 13. We've had multiple talks, and have agreed to keep our finances mostly separate, mainly because she had a financially abusive relationship before we got together. We have a shared bank account for our few expenses, vacations, and buying gifts for loved ones. Otherwise, savings, retirements, everything is separate, to the point where she didn't even want me to add her name to the house. Neither of us wanted kids, so that's not an issue. I'm happy with my niece, and my wife is happy with her three nephews. However, one nephew is the same age as my niece, and is freaking out about what he's going to do, since he didn't get a scholarship he was hoping for since he's graduating after next semester. My wife and I were discussing it, and I asked if she had saved up anything. She was surprised by this idea, and asked what I meant. I told her what I had saved for my niece. And now she's demanding I split it. There would still be enough for her to go to the college she wants just not buy a house. I'm not happy with this. My wife has also had very low living expenses, and hasn't saved anything for her side of the family. I'm happy to give the kid gifts, but I want my niece to never be scared of debt or being homeless. Am I the a-hole for refusing? Edit, quick header to clarify some things. My wife moved in with me after two years of dating. Ever since then, the only expenses she's had to pay are half of utilities, half of groceries, and half of our fund money. Both of us contribute about 10 to 15k a year to the household depending on what our vacationing plans are, and the rest of the money is ours to do with as we want. I know she had some debt when we first got together, but she finished paying that off years ago. Other than those combined finances, no, we really don't talk about money. Her request to keep things separate, and so long as neither of us are gambling addicts, we didn't really need to know what the other does. Finally, I really don't consider her nephews mine. I've met them all of two times while I see my niece multiple times a week. The difference in living on different sides of the country, I guess, and my wife doesn't really talk to them on the phone. Her and her family text all the time, but since they're not big phone callers and I haven't been added to the group chat, I'm okay with not having a relationship with them. My wife has, before, expressed liking the fact that I'm not close with her family, since her abusive ex was friends with a lot of them, and it was hard to separate her life from him once they broke up. So these people are pretty much strangers, so I don't consider them family, but my wife's family. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. Wife, I was financially mistreated in past relationships. Separate accounts slash savings and so forth. You, okay. Separate finances. Wife, you have that much saved for niece? Gimme. You, nope. Wife, surprised Pikachu and angry face. Me, lol. Stand your ground. Hit the nail on the head. Also stated in the comments she wants the money he saved spilt four ways. One quarter to the niece, three quarters to her three nephews. That's not how this works. Wife is an audacious a-hole. OP, tell your wife, since the finances are split, there is no need for any further discussion. The money is for your niece. Good day, in my fez voice. Not the a-hole. My wife and I were discussing it and I asked if she had saved up anything. She was surprised by this idea, and asked what I meant. I told her what I had saved for my niece, and now she's demanding I split it. Unless I'm misreading this, you didn't mean she was surprised to find out that the fund you'd been saving for your niece since before you even met her, wasn't some universal fund for all relatives, hers and yours alike, but more, she was surprised at the general idea that one could save up money and give it to a family member in need. And then, having made no efforts nor sacrifices over the years to put together such a fund on her own, decided she had some kind of say in yours. And again, in a fund whose existence predates her initial appearance in your life by years. You were reading it correctly. She hadn't thought of saving money for her family. She's saved a lot in stocks and her 401k, and the retirement accounts, but not a lot for her family's future. Not the a-hole, your wife has no right to demand money from you for her nephews. When she was in the financial abusive relationship, was she the offender? She was the one mistreated. So, we shared the handful of things to share money for, vacations we want, the handful of living expenses we had left, things like that. I don't fault her for not wanting to combine, but yeah, this just leaves a bad taste in my mouth. And that's it for this video guys, if you have thoughts to share, leave a comment below.
Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you like this content. I'll catch you in the next one. Good day everyone.